Wanna know how to create a sunset animation using Tupidoof? Let's find it out! Hi, this is Gustav, the developer of Tupidoof. Welcome to our channel! In this video we are going to learn how to create a short animation representing a sunset using twins. If you have no idea about what a twin is, then I invite you to watch the video playing around with twins. I will leave the link in the description of the Tupidiv. Ok, to start with our new project, the first step we have to follow is to plan the structure of our animation source file. As I mentioned before in previous videos, it's really important to design our project before starting to animate the first frame. So let's define the main layers we are going to use for this animation. The first one will contain only the sky. The second one will contain the sun. And the third one will contain the mountains. Of course, we will use other complementary layers just to make our project a little bit more interesting. An additional layer to include some stars. Other layer to show the moon. And a layer to include a subtle glow behind the mountains. So this is the final order of our layers from back to front. Sky, glow, sun, stars, moon, and mountains. Ok, now that we have our animation plan, let's create the elements for every layer. Layer 1. To create the sky, we are going to use a rectangle to cover all our animation workspace. Of course, you will have to select the fill color you want to use for it from the palette color. Note, to get a constant reference of the borders of your project, you can activate the Save Area Guidelines. It's the second button from left to right located at the bottom menu and believe me when I say it, it's a handy feature. Once we have the sky in place, we are going to create a coloring twin to generate the darkness effect we need to simulate the coming of the night. So let's open the coloring twin. From the settings panel, we will start selecting our sky rectangle, and then we are going to set the parameters for the twin. For this example, this coloring twin is going to end at frame 150. The fill type we are going to use is internal fill. The initial color we are going to set is the same we used when we created the rectangle. The X value is 00FFFF. For the final color of the twin, we will pick a dark gray. For this example, the X value is 47, 47, 47. Finally, we will set the iterations value to 50 which means that the color transformation will occur in the first 50 frames. Along the other 100 frames of the twin, the rectangle will keep the final color defined by the transformation. That's all. Let's apply the twin and see what we have for now. Layer 2. To create the sun hiding behind the mountains, we need to include them first to have a visual reference for the sun. So we are going to work on layer 3 first and then we will get back to this layer to add the sun. Layer 3. To incorporate the mountains into the scene, we are going to follow exactly the same procedure we used for the sky at layer 1. In our case, we previously drew the mountains element and exported it as a library object, so now we are going to include it again. In your case, you just have to draw the mountains directly on the canvas, using either the line tool or the pencil. You choose. Don't forget to pick the green color you want for the filling, and remember that the mountains must be only one object. Once you have created a new coloring twin, Select the mountains element and set the parameters with these values. Ending at frame 150. Fill type internal fill. Initial color 37AC6E. Ending color 
zero zero five five zero zero. Iterations eighty. Okay, it's time to apply the twin. Let's see how it looks like right now. Layer 2 Now that we count on the manas as a visual reference, we can add our sun. In our case, we are going to use a basic ellipse to create its shape. Note, remember that if you want to create a perfect circle, you have to press the control key while you add the ellipse. As our sun is going to move from the left of the screen to the right bottom corner of our workspace, we are going to place it at the left top border of our animation page. For this example, we are going to use two twins, one to move the sun to the whole workspace, another more to change the color of the object from yellow to dark orange. So let's start following the steps for the position twin. Add a new twin. Select the object, in this case the sun and then define the path we want for the sun movement. In our case, we define just one unique inner ball of 40 frames. Notes Don't forget to use the notes of the path editor to adjust the trajectory of the element. Remember that the end of the path must be deep enough to hide the sun behind the mountains. To set the number of frames for your path, Remember that you can edit the frames column at the Innervals table from the settings panel. Ok, let's apply this twin and see how it's going. Now it's time to create the coloring twin for the sun. Here are the steps. Add a new twin. Select the sun at the first frame. Set the parameters of the twin using these values. Ending at frame 40. Field type, internal field. Initial color, FFFF00. Ending color, FF5500. Iterations 40 And that's it! Now we just have to apply this twin to have the basic setup of our sunset. Of course, we want to add new elements into the animation to make it more interesting. So let's add the pending layers. Layer 4 This layer will contain the moon but we will have to move it later behind the layer of the mountains. So, the first step is to draw a moon, in our case, a wedding moon. Now, this is really important. You have to draw it at the frame 80, because it's exactly in the point of the animation where the night begins. Note, remember to place the moon below the mountains, because it will appear from bottom to top. Select the moon and add it into the library as an object. We will need it later. For this case, we just need a position twin following these steps. Add a new twin. Select the moon. Define the path for the object, making sure that the moon ends at the top of the sky. In our case, we just set 7 frames for this twin. Apply the twin. Now, after the frame 87, the position twin disappears, so we will have to add the moon manually from the library, taking care of placing it at the same position of the frame 88. No. 
after that, we just have to copy that object from that frame until the last one, when the animation ends. Layer 5. This layer will contain the stars. To animate them, we will follow almost the same procedure we use for the moon with some little modifications. So let's start drawing one star at the frame 70. Now, we are going to copy that element three times, which means that we are going to animate four stars. Distribute the stars around the sky to your liking. Then select them all and create a group. Export this group as a library element, because we will need it later. Now move the group of stars to the initial position, behind the mountains. The stars we will follow a road similar to the path of the moon, so once again we will need a position twin. Remember the steps? Add a new twin. Select the stars group. Define the path for the object, making sure that the group ends at the top of the sky. In our case we just set 8 frames for this twin. Apply the twin, and that's it. Now our moon made some friends at the sky. Layer 6. This layer will contain the glow behind the horizon, which basically is a copy of the mountain's shape but in white. For this example, all we did was to animate the glow frame by frame in the classic way, making it appear from the back of the mountains. So, the first step is to draw the globe at the frame 62, picking white as the filling color and a transparency value of 70 from the color palette, to make it look shiny. Once we have drew the glow shape at the frame, then we have to copy it in the next three frames. Moving the object a little from bottom to top to create the effect that it is rising. Now, from the frame 66 to the frame 150, we will have to copy the glow shape to extend the effect until the end of the animation. Once we have finished all the layers we need for our animation, it's important to verify that they are sorted in the right way. So let's review the final order of our layers one last time. Sky, Glow, Sun, Stars, Moon, and Mountains. No, remember that you can edit the order of the layers anytime by dragging the title of the layer in the direction you want to move it. Okay, it's time to watch the final result. Do you like it? I hope so. It's important to say that for this example we included many details and of course 
you can create versions much more simpler than this. Remember that you always can choose the complexity of your animation projects. So don't worry if you want to try a basic version of this exercise to develop your skills using twins. By the way, I want to show you an advanced version of this animation made by your friend Jorge Andrade. Impressive, right? Okay, if you have any question about this exercise, please leave a message in the comment section so I can help you. Now it's greetings time. On this occasion, I want to say hi to E. Joy, who's Rain Adam, Abra Kadabra, and Saraf Binod. Thank you for your comments. Well, that's all for now. Thank you for watching. And please don't forget to like this stupid if and subscribe to our channel. Remember that this inspires me to create new content. Keep animating and see you in the next video.